Uh, Senator Marsha Blackburn is joining us on the uh, Super Talk Hotline. Uh, Senator, thank you very much for joining us here on Nashville's Morning News. And uh, did you ever make it back to Washington, D.C.? I know that it, it's been an interesting couple of days for you. <laughs> it has indeed, and so many flights were canceling, and we finally got a flight. Southwest flew out last night and got into D.C. about midnight. So, yes, we can get back to work. But, Dan, I think we had five different flights that canceled yesterday. So right. you're right. Travel is a mess. Um, the roads were in decent shape uh, when we went to the airport yesterday evening. And, um, you know, it, I know all of that froze over and they're probably an absolute mess this morning with all the ice and snow. Yeah, and well, it sounds like you didn't get a lot of sleep either, so I appreciate you waking up early to join us on sure, Super Talk 99.7. All right, very quickly, I love this bill that you want to, um, that you've submitted, I guess, a bill to punish those people that have been, you know, I, ca I call them, you know, pro-Palestinian, pro-Hamas, uh, anti-Israel protesters that are blocking public roads. Now, you want to make that into, I guess, it's a crime that is uh, really going to have some meat behind the punishments. Talk a little bit about that. Yes, this is something that, that Tom Tillis and I had worked on. One of the things we were hearing from law enforcement was the frustration with people who would protest and block interstate highways. So uh, by making this a felony offense, they're endangering lives, they're endangering law enforcement and emergency response as well as commuters who are trying to get to planes and trains and buses and over bridges and highways and get to work. But increasing enforcements and penalties is a good way to do that. And uh, that is the legislation that we've done. And We've had many members of the Senate who have joined us in that effort. Do you think, uh, Senator, that the Democrats will uh, vote for that legislation? Because it seems to make sense to me. This is just to let you know, this is something that I am very passionate about just because it it really bothers me. I and I went off for like, you know, 20 minutes yesterday because they surrounded Sloan Kettering Cancer Center in New York. And I have some experience at Sloan Kettering because I had a, a family member, uh, my son, who had cancer. And we actually took him to Sloan Kettering. And I just cannot imagine with all that the, these folks are going through to have to wade through this throng of absurdity because they believe that the powers that be, I guess, at Sloan Kettering have, have donated to you know pro-Israeli causes. It's just it boggles my mind, and so I guess my question, my long-winded question, I apologize, I apologize, but do you, do you think the Democrats will sign on to this legislation? I think there are Democrats who will join us in these because they know the how you cannot go block these roads and streets and entrances. And, Dan, there is a way for people to petition their government. There is a way for people to make their voice heard and there's a proper way and an inappropriate way and what we feel is passing this legislation would send that message that no you're welcome to peaceful protest that is a good thing to speak up but to endanger others and to prevent access is inappropriate Senator Marsha Blackburn joining us last night. The Senate uh, apparently advanced a bill that would set up a continuing resolution. It'd be a vehicle for a continuing resolution, ultimately uh, setting up and leading to a, that $1.6 trillion spending package. Uh, let's talk a little bit about that. It doesn't sound like we're going to get any cuts in uh, this uh, $1.6 trillion spending package. We'll have to wait and see what the conservatives do in the House. Um, what's your thoughts on the fact that we're going to have yet another continuing resolution? And, of course, I would like to see us move to a budget to go to regular order to put these appropriations bills in place. That would be a good thing, beginning to reduce the size and scope of the federal government. You've heard me say this for years. And across-the-board spending cuts. Maybe let's do start with a spending freeze, a hiring freeze, a federal salary freeze, 
and begin to reshape this budget. I look forward to the House making some cuts and sending that continuing resolution to us, and then we will see how quickly the Senate is going to choose to take it up. Is it is it appropriate to say, Senator, that if you really want cuts, and this is to all you conservatives out there, and I am definitely one, but if you really want cuts and if you really want to do everything that you know, Senator Marsha Blackburn just mentioned, we need a, a more of a majority in the House. We need a majority in the Senate, and we need the White House. Otherwise, it just it, it doesn't feel like we're going to get the cuts that we need. And one of the things that we need is for the White House, the Senate, and the House to get on the same page and begin to make those spending reductions. The taxpayer is overtaxed. People know that. Inflation is too high. Government is spending far too much money. When you look at our debt that we have, you know that you're capping the future of our kids and grandkids because they're going to have to pay for all of this. And that, that note is going to come due and it's going to have to be paid. And you have to look at who holds our debt. You've got uh, Japan, you have China, you have Brazil, you have the OPEC producing com- countries. These are the top holders of our debt. People need to pay attention to this. Senator Marshall Blackburn joining us on the Newsmaker Hotline, the right to life battle, always on the mind of conservatives, uh, Senator. Now, this week you filed the Women's Right to Know Act. So talk about what's in it. Yes, indeed. And what we know is that after the Dobbs decision, many of our states moved forward with legislation around this issue, which is informed consent and making certain that women who are looking at abortion understand all of the medical risk to both the expectant mother and to that unborn child, and making certain that this information is given to them at least 24 hours prior to the scheduled abortion. We think that is an important part of this. It is something that federally has not been done, And while the states have the lead when it comes to apology uh, on policies on abortion regulation and restrictions, we think that having this information of a woman having a right to know uh, is an important part of this. One of the questions I wanted to ask you just as we wrap up, Senator, um, big, I know you endorsed uh, President, former President Donald Trump. He won big in Iowa. We have some new polling out there today from New Hampshire that shows that uh, we may see a victory for the former president in New Hampshire. As you watch the Republican primary sort of shape out here, as we see how it all is shaping up, uh, what are your thoughts on the president and his what I would say is clear momentum uh, as we make our way towards South Carolina and beyond? Yes, and in Iowa, the president got more votes than all of his competitors combined. That is noteworthy. The momentum is with him. The more he is attacked, the more people say this is not right. Uh, They remember his policies uh, just so positively, and they remember that they had more money in their pocket under President Donald Trump. The world was a safer place. We did not have new wars that started. And they would like to return to that and restore some civility in government. And you're going to see him with the victory in New Hampshire, South Carolina. Super Tuesday is going to be mighty good for President Donald Trump. He will be the nominee and the next president of the United States. All right, we'll uh, we'll stop it there, Senator. Thank you very much, as always, for joining us here you on Super it. Talk ninety nine seven WTN.